Okay, great. So good morning and welcome to everybody. I'm sorry for the delay. Um, technology is not our friend this morning. So while we're preparing to start, um, please note that this is a Zoom webinar and not the Brady Bunch style meeting format, which can sometimes be a little distracting and probably would have been simpler this morning, but anyway. Uh, with that, you will not have to worry about your camera or your microphone. And we want you to please submit questions at any time using the Q&A icon found at the bottom of your screen. I hope that everyone is doing well this morning and ready to learn about Reiki and explore how this practice of Asian origin can be incorporated into all of our wellness journeys. My name is Cheryl Thompson, and I, along with Janine Payne, serve as co-directors of the Institute for the Advancement of Women's Health, or IAWH. If you've never heard of IAWH or participated in any of our community-based programs, let me tell you a little bit about us. We're a nonprofit organization dedicated to advancing education on women's health. We host and produce programs like today, learning sessions to help make you um, better prepare to make decisions about your health and introduce you to some new and maybe some not so new evidence-based information. We've been around since 2018, well before the COVID-19 pandemic. And during the pandemic, we offered a lifeline to women right here in the DMV community and to women across the globe who were able to access our programming online. I encourage you to visit our website and to check out some of our past programs on a variety of topics like breast cancer and cervical cancer, um, social isolation and loneliness, lupus, um, caregiving and support, and menopause. And in the year 2022 20, through 2023, we ran a self-measure blood pressure monitoring program where we developed a program invited people to participate and provide them with Bluetooth blood pressure monitors and guided them through a collaborative learning program. We hope to revive that program with a few modifications and upgrades soon, so stay tuned. This year, IAWH is endeavoring to offer a series of learning sessions on alternatives to purely Western medicine to achieve wellness. We begin today with an exploration of Reiki, a presentation brought to us by Katherine Miller. So please look out for additional learning sessions on acupuncture, forest bathing, and sound bathing throughout the re remainder of the year. Keep reading our newsletters. They are packed with thoughtful information and announcements of these kinds of learning activities. And we hope that you take advantage of them and share them with your friends and family. So quickly today, um, this is the welcome. I will be introducing our speaker. She'll provide us with a um, presentation on Reiki and exploration into subtle energy. And then there will be time for Q&A and then any final tips and takeaways. So let me introduce our speaker for the morning. Catherine Miller is an integrative wellness professional in the DMV who strives to make wellness accessible and empowering for others. By day, Catherine works in corporate wellness, supporting efforts to increase engagement and help employees make small but lasting changes to improve their health and well-being. Catherine's real passions, however, are Reiki, yoga, mindfulness, and trauma-informed practices. She first experienced the benefits of Reiki as a brain tumor survivor and witnessed the benefits in others when she served as a Reiki volunteer at a local hospital. She's a Reiki master and provides services through Four Directions Wellness, a studio based in Alexandria, Virginia, providing Reiki services to community members as well as teaching Reiki level one and two classes. Catherine is a 200-hour registered yoga teacher and is also trained in divine sleep yoga, nidra, focusing on classes that help students relax 
unwind and be more present. I could use all of that. Catherine completed her MS in nutrition, is a mindfulness teacher, a certified crystal practitioner, and a certified health and wellness coach. For her work at Four Directions Wellness, she was named an honoree for the Alexandria Chamber of Commerce's 40 Under 40 Awards in 2020. Overall, she loves how powerful each of these wellness practices are in building self-awareness and helping in one's healing journey. Prior to these trainings, Catherine received her BA in history from Dartmouth College and a minor in anthropology and participated in the bridge program at the Tuck School of Business in Dartmouth. Thank you, Catherine, for joining us today. And I will stop sharing my slides and turn the program over to you. Wonderful. Good morning, everyone. Um, thank you for that lovely introduction, Cheryl. I'm really excited to be here with you all this morning. Um, give me one second to just share my slides. Okay. So let me know if you all can see them. Yes. Okay, wonderful. So as, as Cheryl said, we're going to dive into and just explore Reiki, which is this subtle energetic healing practice. Um, here's our agenda for this morning. I'll just give a brief introduction about Four Directions Wellness. Um, Cheryl already talked about me, so I'll probably keep my, <laughs> um, my notes about myself to a minimum. I always like to start um, our classes with a meditation. I know it's early in the morning, so hopefully it's been pretty relaxing for you, but just taking time to settle into our space with each other, you know, kind of leaving a demarcating from what we had going on before or from this week just helps us to be more present in our online classroom together. I'll give a brief history of Reiki and where it came from, how it got here, ways it's used. And we'll do a couple of experiential practices. So first we're gonna practice sensing our auras. And then we'll talk a little bit about common sensations of Reiki, benefits of Reiki, a little bit about some of the evidence of Reiki. And then I will guide you all through a self-care Reiki experience before Q&A. So um, Four Directions Wellness, um, as Cheryl mentioned, is located in Alexandria, Virginia. We are affiliated with GW Center for Integrative Medicine, for anyone who's familiar um, with the center. But our offerings serve to connect the mind, body, and spirit. Oftentimes, I think especially in Western culture, we're told that they have to be separate or we're told not to listen to, you know, maybe to those gentle nud nudgings that we have within. And so our work really helps people to bring our whole selves together. And so I, in, in that realm, I focus on the Reiki and energy work through sessions and classes. And um, Mara Benner, who started Four Directions Wellness, she also um, is trained in Reiki. She is my Reiki master teacher, um, but she also does mind, body, spirit coaching, intuitive guidance, provides spiritual exercises and more. Um, so again, a little bit about me. I'm originally from Northern Virginia, so I've been in this area uh, most of my life. Um, as Cheryl mentioned, I went to school in New England, you know, thought I was going to, I thought I was going to work in the nonprofit space. That's where I started. But wellness and these wellness practices have actually been a part of my life for a long time. I had um, injuries <laughs> growing up and I had some health stuff going on. And so kind of slowly but surely, I got introduced to several um, of these alternative or complementary practices, not realizing that this is what I would become very passionate about. Um, so while I do corporate wellness by day, um, I love my work and my studies and practicing things like Reiki, yoga, you know, incorporating how nutrition can be very helpful for us, um, crystal healing, health and wellness coaching, um, aromatherapy, right? Scents can also be very healing for us. And if all goes well, I hope that I will be, I should be receiving hopefully my certification in sound healing next weekend. Um, and as Cheryl uh, noted, I'm a brain tumor survivor. So 10 years ago, a little over 10 years ago, I was started to um, 
have an increase in headaches to the point where they were becoming debilitating. And I started to have these very strange experiences, which come to find out were um, a focal seizure. So it was not a grand mal seizure, but I was having um, seizures that were affecting my cognition to the point where um, I lost my ability to speak. So when I finally told my parents something was wrong, we went to the doctors, I was given an MRI, they found the tumor and within three weeks, about three to four weeks, I had an awake craniotomy to remove the tumor. And thankfully, they were able to remove it in full. Um, physically, I looked great. I went back to get the the, the staples out of my head. Um, about two weeks later, the surgeon said, you look great. But I felt this cloud over the area of my um, of the incision in my skull. And you know, the Western doctors said, there's nothing we can really do about that. They didn't know how to explain it, but I had recently, I'd finished my yoga teacher certification right before all of this happened. And my teacher told my mom, um, Hey, I have this Reiki practitioner coming up to the studio. You know, it might be helpful for Catherine. And so I went and saw her. I only told this practitioner about my brain. I didn't tell her that I had an old dance injury flare up in another, in, uh, in my knee. And that's actually what she started on first. She felt and noticed the sensation um, in that area and first started on my knee. So from that moment, I was very intrigued because I was like, how, like, what's going on? How does she know? Um, and when she made her, her way around my body and made her way to my head, she stayed probably about five minutes there. And I could feel when she moved her hands away, the that cloud feeling moved with it. Um, so from there, I did my level one and two trainings with my mom and I wanted to give back. I wanted to volunteer. And so I, well, while I was in the hospital a after my surgery, I didn't realize that there was a Reiki volunteer program. Now that I had this knowledge, I wanted to give back. And so I went back to that same hospital and volunteered for about three years. And unfortunately the, the program came to a high, um, they took a pause with the program and then COVID hit. And so they definitely didn't want us in the hospital setting. Um, but it was probably the best volunteer experience um, that I've ever had. And it was the most meaningful. Um, and I was able to see so many patients like across the board. We were on every floor. Um, and then so I can talk a little bit more about some of those um experiences, but it was very meaningful and impactful and helped build my confidence as a practitioner to be able to help people, you know, from across the board. So uh, just thought I'd throw in a couple fun facts. So I alluded to a dance injury. I grew up doing ballet, jazz, and tap. Um, so that was kind of my life for a while. And I can play three instruments. It's been a while, but I can still play them. And I do love a good murder mystery, whether it be a TV show or a book. So if anyone ever needs recommendations, I'm your girl. Um, okay, so let's begin with uh, meditation. Um, just to help ground and center us and bring in some relaxation. For this, I invite you to come into a comfortable seated position, or if it's more comfortable for you to recline, please feel free to do so. If you want to grab a pillow or blanket or anything you need to feel a little more comfortable, please feel free to do that as well. And when you're ready, I invite you to close your eyes or hold a soft gaze forward, whatever helps you feel safest. Resting your hands in your lap, I invite you to take a deep breath in through the nose. And exhale, sigh it out through your mouth. <sighs> you might feel your shoulders move down away from your ears, creating a little more space in the neck area. And again, a deep breath in through the nose. Sighing it out. <sighs> Imagine sighing out your week, any stressful moments, any thoughts, just kind of placing them off to the side. You can deal with those at another time. And again, deep breath in through the nose. 
and release. <sighs> Noticing your breath now. Noticing how it flows, what it feels like. Just following that inhalation and exhalation. Your breath, which moves often without you even thinking and probably without you paying it much attention. Let's just give it a little bit of some TLC and attention here and now. Observing. Just noticing without judgment, following that path of the breath in and out, in and out. And let's take one more deep breath in. Exhale, side out through the mouth. <sighs> Feel free to make any gentle stretches, movements. I'm rolling my shoulders. Maybe if you want to move your fingers, your hands, your wrists, maybe in your feet, or perhaps stretching your head side to side. Maybe taking a gentle twist, any just gentle movements for our body. And of course, you can feel free to do these as well as we move throughout today's session. But we'll go ahead and get started talking about Reiki. So again, this is a very brief, a brief history of Reiki. Um, Reiki comes uh, from Japan and it translates to meaning universal life force energy in English. Um, so if you're familiar with some other Eastern modalities like acupuncture or Qigong, they refer to that life force energy as Qi. If you're familiar with yoga, they refer to that life force energy as prana. So again, Reiki is just another term for something very similar, right? This universal life force energy that is in everything. Um, it is attributed to a man named Dr. Usui. I have his picture up in the far left corner on the page. Um, he discovered or received Reiki in the early 1900s, although it's believed to be thousands of years old. Um, this is, you know, energy practices have been around for a very, very long time. Um, he actually went on a, a little spiritual retreat and they say he received this information throughout that practice at the end of of his retreat. Um, so he intended this to be a spiritual practice, but soon learned it also has some physical benefits. As a matter of fact, there was um, soon after he, um, he received Reiki and started practicing it, there was an earthquake and they were able to use Reiki to help with some of the healing um, of people, just, um, you know, whether it be a physical or maybe more emotional or mental, um, they were able to use Reiki for that. I will say here in the West, people tend to see it more as a physical practice that just so happens to have spiritual benefits of it, opposite. Um, but just remembering that there is um, there is like this spiritual ener energy and spiritual essence to Reiki. It is a non-manipulative, non-invasive practice, and hands can either be on or off the body. So we will do a practice later on this morning. Um, so you can either touch yourself, right, or you can kind of hover over yourself. Um, and this is the same when, when I work with clients. Um, I will say that as some people have experienced um, trauma or sometimes if people, you know, maybe having a mental health issue or crisis, um, sometimes 
taking the hands off can feel a little more comfortable or beneficial. Okay. Um, so I'll just say oftentimes as practitioners, we always ask for consent and we always ask if they prefer hands on or, off, or hands off the body, but it works both ways. So um, Reiki came to the West in the late 1930s. It came to Hawaii you know, bef before it became a part of the U.S., but it, it came to, um, to Hawaii in the late 1930s. Um, and since then, millions of people have been trained in Reiki across the world. Um, it is used, of course, in one-on-one in -on -one sessions, um, but it's also used in places like hospitals, in hospice and palliative care and rehabilitation centers. Um, and it's a really great complement to Western medicine. So, you know, I will say I have so many examples from working in the hospital where the patient might be in pain. The patient might have received pain medication, right? And pain medication that we know can be very strong and they would still be in pain. And so the nurses were very well aware of um, the, the power and effectiveness of Reiki. And so we would come in after and provide Reiki. And I remember one time there was a, a patient who was, you know, like still kind of crying out in pain after they received the pain medication. And so I was able to come in a little bit later, provide Reiki and the patient fell asleep. So seeing, you know, Western medicine is very powerful. Reiki is powerful and together they worked so, so, so well. Okay, so sensing the aura. So for those of you who may not be familiar with the aura, it's also another, um, you know, people also refer to it sometimes as like your energetic field. Um, some people, you could also call it like your personal bubble. Maybe you've been out in public somewhere and someone's just felt that like they're a little too close to you, right? Maybe they've kind of encroached on, on that um, part of you. Another example, I, um, my, my mom always thought of it as was I have two older brothers and um, we would sometimes do the, the thing where we would, you know, say, I'm not touching you, but your hand would be really close um, to the skin and you it would feel as if they were touching you, right? It was like they were kind of in that space. So why I'm, I'm going to have us do this because it can be helpful to start to sense and feel what what feeling our own energy can feel like, okay? Um, especially before we go into our self-care practice. A lot of times people get in their head and think, oh, I'm not feeling something or what I'm feeling isn't real. What you're feeling and sensing is very real. And so we're gonna practice this now. So a very simple exercise. I'm gonna ask you to take your hands and we're just gonna rub them together. So rubbing our hands together. You might start to feel them get warm. And whenever you're ready to release them, imagine you have this little kind of ball of energy between your hands and just drawing your hands closer together and farther apart. And now if you need to rub your hands together again, you may, but you might feel some slight sensations, maybe as they come closer together and perhaps maybe it dissipates a little as they move farther apart. Feel free to, um, to put any sensations in the Q&A box if you feel like it. So again, this is us kind of sensing that aura within ourselves, okay? Um, and so this can also be a nice way to get used to what some of those sensations might be, right? Especially if we're doing this to ourselves. So what are some common sensations of Reiki? Right, I thought this was a really nice tie-in after sensing our own aura. Of Probably one of the most common sensations is heat or warmth. Sometimes it can just feel like a really nice warm sensation. Other times it can feel like ex like extreme heat, almost like a fire. I once had one uh, person I did um, Reiki on say when I placed my hands over her ears where, and this was the area she wanted me to focus on, she said it felt like her head was in an oven. It was just so hot. Um, sometimes people feel a tingling sensation. The energy kind of shows up as like a tingling sensation. Other times people have emotional releases. This can either be 
in the form of like an, an emotion kind of rising up to the surface and then releasing, or it can come out in as crying. Sometimes people also twitch um, when they start to fall asleep or get very relaxed. Um, you know, they there might just be subtle twitches or sometimes bigger twitches of the body. Some people see colors. Some people have memories come to mind for them. Some people have very vivid dreams or have dream recall. Um, and these next three, I think, are probably some of the most common as well. Oftentimes here in the West, especially, Reiki can just be a very relaxing experience. People can feel so deeply relaxed. Sometimes this leads to sleeping. A lot of times we saw this in the hospital um, where people would fall asleep at the end of, or during and at the end of our session. And we would leave them sleeping because we know sleep is so helpful for, for healing. Other times people just have this sense of peacefulness. When I have asked clients at the end of sessions, you know, how, how are you feeling after this session? Sometimes they'll just say, I just feel really nice. I just feel really good, right? I feel very much at peace. And because Reiki is such a subtle energetic practice, sometimes people don't feel anything at all. It does not mean that the Reiki didn't work. It does not mean that they, you know, they did anything wrong. It just means that it's very subtle. I also want to share that with each Reiki experience I've had and with even in all my client sessions, no session is the same. So sometimes I have very deep experiences. Other times it's very subtle. Other times I fall straight asleep and I have no recollection <laughs> at all of really what happened. Um, so just also keeping that in mind. Okay, and so some of the, um, you know, benefits of Reiki. So Reiki works on the different layers of our being. So physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual. So I'll just go through each one and some examples of what this can look like. So physically, Reiki helps to support our body's own natural healing. Our body is this incredibly designed um, machine, <laughs> you could say, um, but it, it knows what it's supposed to do. Sometimes it just needs a little bit of help and Reiki can help with that. It can also help to rid the body of poisons or toxins or just junk and things that we've accumulated. And through that, it also can help to balance and harmonize our whole system. Reiki can also help to promote a positive sense of well-being, and it can relieve pain. And this was most often what we were called in for in the hospital. Um, you know, someone might be in extreme pain, and the pain would, I would say, 99.9% .9 of the time dissipate um, after the session. While it may not necessarily have gone completely to zero, it would not have been um, as intense as it was prior to, to the work. Emotionally, Reiki helps us more greatly examine our own emotional state. So, and I'm speaking from experience and maybe you've experienced this too. Sometimes, right, something might make you angry, something might make you upset. Reiki can help us take a moment of pause and say, okay, but why am I really angry or upset? Right. What is it about this situation? Is it, is it, you know, something that someone did? Is it reminding me of something from the past? And it's kind of adding fuel to the fire. It helps us kind of have this inner dialogue with ourselves. And through through Reiki, it can also help us let go of negative emotions, anger, or resentment. We may be holding towards ourselves, towards others, or towards a situation. It can help to promote love, care, and trust. And it helps to channel our emotional energy into creativity. So perhaps think of one of your maybe uh, a, a great album that a, a musician put out. You know, sometimes you hear about some of these artists have been through a great loss, right? Or maybe they've been through a breakup, right? Or something happened and they put out this beautiful piece of work. Same with social justice movements. Usually that stemmed from some type of frustration, anger, sadness, grief, right? Instead of them just holding on to that, they channeled it into something bigger, right? Um, and so Reiki can also help us do that. We were all created to create in some way, shape, or form. 
even if we're not an artist, even if we're not a musician, even if we don't right, create this large social justice movement, we all create something and in some way. And Reiki helps with our creativity. Mentally, Reiki helps us get to a very deep state of relaxation um, where we're able to release tension and stress. Sometimes this deep state of relaxation looks like us falling asleep <laughs> and getting very, very good sleep. I feel like a lot of us probably do not get to relax as much or as well as we should, but Reiki helps with that. It also helps us let go of negative thoughts, concepts, and attitudes, again, that we may hold towards ourselves, others, or a situation. And it helps us to enhance our intuitive abilities, leading to greater insights. A lot of times um, in my uh, when I teach Reiki classes, a lot of times people tend to um, start to get more like intuitive nudgings or knowings. And so practicing Reiki, especially um, more frequently, can help with our intuition if that's something that we're, we are interested in. And spiritually, Reiki helps us to accept and love our whole self. It helps us foster a non-judgmental approach, again, towards ourselves, others, or a situation. It helps us to promote love and compassion, and it allows for individual spiritual growth. And what I love most about Reiki is that our intention is always that it be for our highest and greatest good. Um, so maybe you want to come in for pain relief, but maybe what you really need is something maybe on the emotional, mental, or spiritual level, right? And maybe when that is addressed and there's you know, this Reiki energy added to that, Maybe then through that, right, some of that pain relief can come. Okay, so a little bit about the evidence. I will share there, unfortunately, have not been a ton of studies done on Reiki. I think it's still one of those things um, that kind of Western medicine can't figure out. Um, same with meditation. I, I remember reading a story of scientists trying to figure out how meditation works, and so um, if, if I'm remembering correctly, they, they had these monks um, who went into like deep states of relaxation and they would actually um, do things like fire guns right next to their head. And the monk's heart level, you know, his vital, their vitals would stay the same. And Western medicine just couldn't figure that out. And with Reiki, it's, I, I think, kind of the same thing. So according to the center, there's a center for Reiki research. I believe they have about 33 studies um, and they're still working to do more. But in this one study that I found from um, Reiki.org, Reiki, the uh, article is called Reiki, the Scientific Evidence. They talked about in, um, in 2010, they found that when nurses gave Reiki to 12 patients uh, recovering from acute coronary syndrome, um, the vagal nerves became more active which when, you're, you know, when your vagus nerves become more active, it can indicate a re uh, relaxation effect. So they noticed that the Reiki was having similar effects um, to a medicine that is known to be an effective therapy for heart disease. It, the increase in the vagal nerve activity was st statistically significant compared to the results from groups of patients who listened to meditative music or who just received standard care. But they did know that they did not have... Um, someone who was untrained in Reiki mimicking the hand positions of Reiki. So, you know, that was one thing to note in this study. Uh, there was another one, there's a 2015 review um, that found that uh, Reiki or practices like Reiki were effective at easing pain. Um, it also um, can help reduce certain symptoms in, in cancer patients, such as fatigue, pain, and anxiety. And so I, I put on this slide, you know, my own personal experience from volunteering in the hospital, we did see this quite often. Um, and I'll just give a couple of examples. I remember one was a patient who was on the neuro unit, um, had also had um, surgery like I did and couldn't sleep. And so we were able to provide Reiki to the patient and they were able to sleep through the night. And I remember when I came back the following week, some of the family members of this individual were there and they were so grateful because they said he finally was able to sleep and, um, you know, like sleep through the night, sleep through an extensive period of time. And right. We know that that can, a good night's rest can be a, a game changer for all of us. Um, we also, um, 
you know, we were in all of the ICU units. We were in the labor and delivery unit um, from women who needed to be monitored during their pregnancy to also working with women who, um, I, I once worked with a woman who had just delivered. She had her newborn right next to her. Um, and so helping her to relax following giving birth and the mother was able to sleep. She was able to have some pain relief. Um, I'll just share one other story. There was um, also once a, a patient at the hospital that we worked with or that I worked with who had had a stroke and still had some numbness down one of one of their legs. And as I worked on her and worked down her leg, um, you know, I, I could feel a sensation, a kind of warm sensation moving down her leg. And afterwards, this individual walked and said it felt like the numbness had, she could feel the numbness moving down and she said she was able to walk better, right? So we know, of course, that the treatment she was receiving in the hospital, coupled with this Reiki practice together can be very, very healing and just helping people on their healing journey. We never say that we're curing anybody. You know, I, I never want to, to say that, oh, you know, because of this one Reiki practice, right? It cured or solved everything but it helps people on their healing journey and can help us whether we're, we've just had a stressful day, right? Or whether we've had something, we have something more serious going on that might require additional medical treatment. Okay, so now we're gonna go into this self-care Reiki experience. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna guide you all through some hand positions. Um, so we're just going to take about a minute or so on each of these hand positions, just so we can, again, kind of bring some relaxation into ourselves. Um, again, your hands can be on or off your body. Um, as you do this, we do just ask, you know, kind of keeping your fingers together. I'll give some different variations of hand positions. And I'll just read um, a little bit from my Reiki master teachers. Reiki master teacher, her name is Luann Jacobs. She wrote some beautiful words as we move through these hand position. So I'll be reading that and guiding you. And here are the hand positions. I'll still describe them, but so feel free to close your eyes if that feels most comfortable for you, or you can keep your eyes open. Again, whatever works best for you. And this diagram here is sourced from um, a, a website, Poetic Mind. I just thought it's a very clear description for it. So I invite you once again to get into a comfortable seated position, or if you'd like to be reclined, you may do so. And so let's turn towards our breath, just noticing our breath flowing in and flowing out. As we begin to move into awareness of what is present and to do so without judgment, but instead with reverence, right? For all that we are. So we'll first begin with our hands over our eyes. So you can cover your hands this way. You can place one hand over each eye, whatever works best for you. In this position, I invite you to give permission to yourself to tune out the outside world and go inward. Just notice what is here without judgment. Breathe and slow the breath, allowing the eyes to rest. Noticing what it's like to find the sacred spaces within ourselves. Breathing here. Sliding the hands down to the jaw. Finding a comfortable position for your hands, either low on the jaw or perhaps fingertips to the hairline, whatever feels most comfortable for you. Breathe in and out and rest here without judgment. 
Perhaps allow the teeth to part slightly. Observe what happens in the neck and shoulders when we release in the jaw. Noticing as well when we release the mouth, allowing the tongue to relax. Breathe into this space. I invite you now to move the hands to the back of the head. The hands can be stacked one on top of the other, almost as if you were creating a little headrest for yourself. And we'll just hold this one here for five rounds of breath. I know it's not the most comfortable position. But breathing into this back side of the head where so many processes are going on in our body. Breathing in, breathing out. And moving now, the hands down to the throat area. <clears throat> Excuse me, you can place one hand on either side of the throat, or you can cross your hands over your throat, whichever feels most comfortable for you. Taking a deep breath in here, exhale it out. Just notice and reflect what is located here. Here, the throat is a huge way station of energy and processes. Vocal cords giving sound to our speech, the thyroid gland regulating metabolism. This is the passageway for air to the lungs and food to the stomach. The spinal cord delivers brain's messages to the rest of the body. And also, here lies the energy of speaking your truth. Take a few more breaths in here as you connect to your truth. Our hands now will move to the heart chest area in whatever configuration is comfortable for you. So again, if you'd like to place one hand on either side of the chest or maybe cross your hands or stack your hands, feel free to move into the most comfortable space for you. Breathing into the hands and into the heart in this energy work, we see the hands as an extension of the heart. So it can feel extra loving to breathe into this unbroken circle of heart energy, unconditional love. I invite you here to breathe in and out with unconditional love connection. Moving the hands now down to the upper um, stomach area. So just below the rib cage, um, this upper belly area in, in, if we talk about chakras, is known as the solar plexus. So here we have a lot of fiery energy. This is our emotional, the seat of our emotional fire. This is also our emotional processor and our digestive energy. 
So just breathing in and out here, noticing what this energetic center with this digestive area of our body feels like, noticing any sensations. And sliding the hands down now to the low belly area, the womb area. So this here is more representative of water energy. I invite you to breathe into this space. Deep, full breath in and out. This position is all about creative potential both for physical procreation and also for creative energy of our choosing. So I invite you to reflect to yourself, where do I create? What modality do I create in? Whatever it may be, maybe it's cooking, baking, writing, gardening. Maybe it's painting, crafts, dancing, acting, singing, teaching, photography, music, whatever it is, the primary need is to get it flowing. Water doesn't like to be stagnant. It needs to move and movement is health. Breathe into this creative water-like space. We're going to move now to the back side of the body for just a couple of positions. So we're going to combine the upper and mid back to make it a little more comfortable for us. I invite you to take one hand and place it on the opposite shoulder, that opposite shoulder blade, and taking your other hand, bring it around crossing to the opposite back side of the rib. So if you see me, I'm kind of giving myself a little bit of a hug. When you get here, or if there's a more comfortable configuration for yourself, I invite you to take five deep breaths in and out here. Maybe noticing what it feels like to have a little comforting weight on your shoulders, allowing them to relax down. Just to give the back side of our body a little TLC. And as you're ready, we'll switch. We want to be even on both sides in our self-care practice. So just switching hands and again, coming into a gentle hug for ourselves. Breathing deeply here. And releasing the hands, I invite you now to bring your hands to the back of the rib cage, if that's comfortable for you. If you're able to perhaps maybe wrap your hands around um, to grab onto the back of the rib cage, if that works instead. But here we're just going to focus on the, the kidney adrenal area. So maybe just below the rib cage. We, of course, want to be as comfortable as possible. So we'll just hold here for a few rounds of breath. But I did want to share that this treatment point can feel um, often feel a little sore or tired if we've been stressed or not getting enough sleep, or maybe if we're dehydrated. The adrenals are very important endocrine glands that help participate in the nervous system's fight, flight, or freeze responsiveness. And so providing Reiki to this area can help to calm and balance our sympathetic nervous system. 
helping us move into rest and digest. And sliding the hands down to the low back sacrum area. Um, again, we'll hold here for just a few rounds of breath. This position can feel very comfortable, perhaps if we've been seated a long time or even maybe standing a long time, or maybe as well if there are any um, menstrual cycle cramps or pain, this can feel very soothing. And moving now to our last positions, um, I invite you to place your hands on the tops of your thighs. If you're reclined or laying down, you can place your hands underneath um, your glutes. But here we're focusing on the lower half of the body, really focusing on this earth grounding energy. I invite you to breathe as you just notice the gentle sensation of this gentle touch of your hands on your thighs. If you're feeling stressed, anxious, this can feel very soothing, reminding us to connect with the ground beneath us, knowing that we are always supported. And we'll close with working on our feet. So if you want to reach down to your um, each foot, um, I prefer to do one at a time. If you're able to bring one foot up towards you or perhaps cross it over a leg, I invite you to do so. Maybe just placing one hand on the top and one hand on the bottom of the foot. Our, our feet do have energetic centers to them. And so, Oftentimes, again, if we're feeling stressed, fatigued, a little ungrounded, focusing on the lower half of the body, feet included, can just help us reconnect to that feeling of support, that feeling of groundedness, that feeling that we can take on the day, we can handle whatever comes our way. Breathing in, breathing out. And switching to the other foot. For some people, this can also feel really nice if maybe you've been on your feet all day, maybe you've been running or wearing uncomfortable shoes. Again, just giving our body a chance for some TLC. And releasing that second foot, I invite you to draw your palms together over your heart. Just take this moment of pause, noticing how you're feeling, again, without judgment. And if it feels comfortable for you, sending a thank you to the Reiki for providing whatever support or healing that you needed today. And also send a thank you to yourself. You could have been anywhere else this last hour, you, but you know, you chose to show up for yourself to learn something, to learn something new. And that is always deserving of gratitude. As you're ready, I invite you to take a deep breath in once again. Exhale, sigh it out through your mouth. 
<sighs> Releasing your hands and once again, making any small gentle movements, stretches that your body needs to. And we can move on to the Q&A portion. Catherine, this has been phenomenal. <laughs> this has been fantastic. And thank you so much of course. for introducing um, to some and review for others, perhaps. Um, I know that walking through those self-care um, positions was wonderful. I connected personally with the need to be grounded and maybe maybe other people are experiencing that as well um, these days. Things feel so unmoored and grounded in so many different aspects of our lives. Um, the creativity piece as well as um, just de-stressing. Um, opening up the Q&A, anyone has a question for Catherine, please use the Q&A icon at the bottom of the screen. But during registration, some really thoughtful questions came in from folks um, and we can start with those and um, I'll mix these up. Mm -hmm. um, the first one that I have comes from, I don't know who it comes from. I'll keep these anonymous. <laughs> it says, I often have painful uterine fibroids that cause me to have super heavy, heavy periods. Can I get relief from um, Reiki mm -hmm. for this? Uh, yes. Now, again, you know, I don't want to say what the extent of that relief may look like. Sometimes, right, for some people, it can help with the pain. For some people, it might um, perhaps help with the bleeding. But it can be, um, it can be very helpful for us, like, ac like, just across the board in terms of the pain, the heavy bleeding, I think, especially if it's something that you're engaging with regularly, right? So even if you just spend a few minutes each day, you know, with your hands around your womb area, or maybe one hand on the low back, one hand on the womb area, right, taking that kind of quiet meditative time, you could even imagine if you're a visual person, maybe imagine just like this um, kind of white light or golden light just kind of emanating from your hands over this area. Um, and of course, right, in addition to any other treatment that may be prescribed by your doctor, right? I, I never want, again, us to leave here thinking that, you know, oh, it's going to be the cure-all, but it, this can be something you can do, right? And you can have some control over um, on a more day-to-day -day basis. So hopefully that's helpful. Thank you for that answer. I just have a follow-up um, to your presentation. How much of the effectiveness of Reiki depends on um, an individual's belief in it, um, that they will feel better or be moving towards wellness? Yes. Um, I think that does play a big part in it. Although, again, from the hospital, I, rem I this one individual in particular was very skeptical you know, a lot of people were very skeptical, but this one per person was very skeptical, but was willing to, you know, have me do Reiki on him within about five minutes. He was asleep and he was still asleep when I left. Like I couldn't check in to see, you know, how, how was your, you know, what, what his pain level was before I couldn't check in to see what it was like at the end of the session because it was, because it was effective. So I do think that I have found that I think the people who are probably a little more um, into this, right, and, and wanting of it, I find that sometimes they tend to have maybe um, can speak to their experience a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Some people, right, even if they're skeptical and they do feel something, they're just not quite sure, right? Maybe they're not sure how to put it into words. Um, I know someone else, someone in my family I did Reiki on, they were skeptical of it. And uh, when my mom and I did Reiki on them, we were like, hey, like there's something in your in your shoulder. Like, have you been, you know, like it's a little like warm here. And they kind of looked at us because I think they've been working out and it was a little kind of getting a little uh, injured. Um, so, you know, they were surprised at that too. So I think 
people, it can still work, right, regardless. But I do find that with the people who um, are less skeptical and more accepting of it, I think their experience, they're able to provide more wording to it. It can be deeper. Um, and mm -hmm. sometimes people start off skeptical and then, right, come to be more accepting of it based on their experience. Okay. Yeah. Good question. question from the Q&A pod mm -hmm. um, from Jacqueline. She says, thanks so much for this presentation. We placed hands on our bodies in this session. What if we didn't literally touch, but held the hand slightly away from our bodies? Would the impact be different? So that's a good question too. It, you, it might be a different sensation, but the ultimate impact would still be the same. Again, um, you know, I'll share sometimes with people who've experienced different traumas, especially some of the people I've worked with have experienced more either physical traumas or uh, sexual trauma. And so certain places on their body, right, is like, we, we do not, we just can't touch. Um, they can still have a very profound and deep experience in Reiki. When I also volunteered at the hospital, I did group sessions for the medical psychiatric unit. Um, and again, typically we, we would not place our hands um, on them. I would just kind of hover over and they would still be able, they would actually be able to speak very, very honestly and very beautifully about their experience. Um, so yes, yeah, so you can either do hands on or hands off. I invite you to kind of exper um, experiment with that as well, just to see, you know, maybe one position feels better if you kind of hover over it, you know, but maybe other positions on your body feel, it feels better or feels a little more impactful when you touch yourself. Okay. I know we're running out of time. We were yeah. supposed to end at 12.15. Um, <laughs> so if you could quickly address some of these. Yeah. Any risks of encounters with evil or negative spirits mm -hmm. while I'm relaxed and receiving Reiki? Have you had those kind of comments or questions before, Catherine? Um, You know, sometimes I, I will say some people do have some experiences like that. And I think it might be a little bit more attributed perhaps to, um, you know, maybe 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 what the practitioner was doing sometimes I, I think people have received something but didn't know it from the practitioner right maybe they received an attunement or maybe it wasn't clear about what was happening um typically though I, I will say I have not experienced that and whenever I work on someone and I always advise my students right we are always doing this with the intent that it is for the highest and greatest good right? it is always for the highest and greatest good um, but I think that that is something, right? I think that's a beautiful question. That's a wonderful question to ask, but that's how I teach it. And that's what we're moving with that, um, that intention. Okay. I'm going to combine a couple of these. Okay, yeah. um, how much does Reiki cost and how often should I do it? And then if, if it's for a specific, um, if, you're if you're receiving or doing Reiki for a particular um, condition or situation, does it vary? Like how, how often you need? Good question. Um, so cost wise, it kind of depends on, um, you know, the practitioner you're working with and maybe how much experience they've had. I'd say usually I've seen anywhere between the 100 to $200 range. Again, this also depends if the practitioner is maybe they're traveling to you. Um, so usually about in there, um, there is not as much of a protocol in terms of like, um, how frequent you need to see someone, you know, this self-care practice you could do every day. Um, you could, whereas something like acupuncture, right. They might say, okay, you need to come twice a week for the first month. And then you can come once a week for the second month, but uh, for your regimen Reiki, you could do every day. You could do once a week, once a month, once every two weeks, you could do twice a week. I think it really depends on the individual, you know, your budget, your time, what works for your schedule. Um, and I think also, and again, not necessarily a protocol for for what is going on. Um, sorry, not a protocol based on the, the diagnosis, um, but maybe perhaps you've had a, a surgery. And so maybe you wanna have Reiki a little bit more frequently in the beginning, right? Right after the surgery. And then maybe it kind of tapers off. Um, maybe a, a month out or, or two, right? So I always usually tell people kind of like go with how you're feeling, 
So if maybe, right, you want to see someone every week, twice a week, and then you start to move to, oh, let's just do once a week, right? Because I'm starting to feel better or I'm starting to, like whatever those symptoms were are starting to dissipate. So I, I think it's it's a little flexible is my my overall answer. Okay. Um, Lynn asks, what time of day is best to do this? Yes, that's a great question. And again, it, it depends on you. You can do, some people do it first thing in the morning, like especially if they're doing it to themselves. Some people do morning sessions. Um, sometimes, you know, afternoon or early evening can be nice, especially after a long day, right? Maybe you've had meetings, maybe you've been running errands. It's a nice little way to relax, maybe before dinner and, and going to bed. Um, sometimes doing it at night, right before bed can be nice too, because maybe you're extremely relaxed and then, right, you can just fall right asleep. I will just share one time I did my self-care practice in bed because I just, you know, wanted to calm myself down. I got to the first position with my hands over my eyes and I fell asleep. And I know this because my hands then fell on my face and it woke me up and I couldn't, I couldn't even move to the second position. I just, I was like, okay, let me turn over and call it a night. Okay. I'm going to try to squeeze in three more questions yeah, and then yeah. ask you to give final thoughts and any tips and things you want to give at the end. So Jacqueline asks online, um, have you had success relieving neuropathic pain? Oh, um, it has been, so that's a good thing, relieving it. So it has been help, you know, it can be that added complement to it. Um, you know, just as you might find this as well with a practice like acupuncture, Reiki can help, but I think it also just depends on maybe the source of it. And then again, if someone else is working with the, with the person, right, maybe the source of the neuropathic pain and, um, but it can help, I, I would say with like the pain itself, whether or not it would completely get rid of it, right. I don't want to make any promises with that. Okay. Okay, so this question says, I have a friend that suffers from depression, or maybe she is bipolar. Mm -hmm. She doesn't see a therapist. If I can get her to do Reiki, how would it help her? And then the final question, um, how do you know that you are actually working with someone who's qualified to do Reiki that's like a legitimate person? Yes. Okay, very, very good questions. Okay, so I'll try to keep this brief. So for the first one with the person who's... Um, when we talked about depression and um, bipolar, um, it can help, right? It can maybe help with things with grounding the person. It might be able to provide some mental or emotional support and relief. And at the same time, I would still encourage this individual to work with a therapist. Um, you know, as a Reiki practitioner, I'm, I'm not a therapist. If I was, right, maybe it would be a little bit different, but I'm not a therapist. And so my work can only go so far. And so we have to, as practitioners, be very clear about kind of our scope of work and knowing when someone else may be better able to provide things that we can't. So again, when I was in the hospital doing the group's uh, sessions, the, th the psychotherapist for the hospital was in the Reiki sessions with us. And so while I could, of course, do the meditation and the breath work and the Reiki, she would be able to speak more so to some of the things that came up for the individuals, right? Or maybe speak to some things that they've all been working in the different group sessions with throughout the day. Um, and so I will say, while yes, Reiki can be beneficial, I think it can only go so far, but to have this individual also then working with a therapist, right? And then having that in conjunction with the Reiki, um, I think together would probably be most helpful, especially if this friend is starting to talk at all about any type of harm to themselves or others, right? We just, we are not, we would be doing a disservice to say that Reiki will be able to fix or resolve this, knowing full well that someone else can give better or the most appropriate treatment for that. Absolutely. Um, and then in terms of, right, how do you know if your practitioner is legit? Um, so typically, um, you know, uh, level, so there's level one, level two, and then Reiki master level training. So um, with level two training, that is then when people are deemed a professional. Um, I would still, you know, you might want to maybe read up on the practitioner, right? Maybe how, how long they've been doing this work and what capacity they've been doing this work. Also, uh, 
you know, maybe just getting to know them, kind of doing a little bit of an interview to find to find that they're the right match for you, right? Because just as, you know, maybe you maybe uh, you know, you kind of have to do go therapist uh shopping sometimes, maybe you have to go house shopping sometimes, right? You want to find the one that feels like a good fit for you. And so with our Reiki practitioner, we can do the exact same thing. Um, I will say there is a website called IARP.org. I believe there there's a directory of Reiki practitioners, maybe in your area or close to you. Feel free to check that out just to maybe give yourself a starting point. Um, but definitely look at their credentials. Definitely look at the work that they do. Maybe see if you can find any testimonials. Um, I think that would be the best way to start. Thank you, Catherine. This has been fantastic. <laughs> So do you want to leave us with any parting tips or? Um... Yes, of course. Um, so I will just share one. We always tell people drink a lot of water. I mean, we always need to stay hydrated, um, but, you know, drink a lot of water after this. It can kind of help just keep the energy flowing. If you feel a little relaxed this afternoon or tired, sometimes the Reiki can kind of, or can, the effects of relaxation can sometimes hit a little bit later. Um, so just listen and on, listen to and honor your body. Right. If you feel like, oh, you know what, I'm tired, listen to yourself. Right. We need we need this this time to pause for ourselves. Um, and if you have any questions at all, you can feel free to email me at Catherine at fourdirectionswellness.com. You can also visit our website. Um, and this can be any questions, right? Maybe something we didn't get a chance to get answered here. Or, you know, if you just have another question about Reiki, please feel free to email me. We are always um, you know, we always want to just provide more information and help keep, keep people informed. So that's Thank it. you. Thank you so much. And this brings our program to a conclusion. I would like you to, let's see if I can bring my screen up without too much problem. Um, okay. We're to remind people of some upcoming sessions that I mentioned in the beginning that we'll be having throughout the rest of the year. Um, we have a session coming up on acupuncture, one on forest bathing, and one on sound bathing. So stay tuned, keep reading the newsletters, um, and we'll be sending out information. And then finally, this is the information you may need to contact us um, at the Institute for the Advancement of Women's Health. Thank you again, Catherine. This has been absolutely phenomenal. And um, um, it's been great working with you. I hope to work with you soon. With, with <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. It was really my honor and my pleasure. Thank you for the wonderful questions um, and just love all the work that you all are doing. This is so important. So thank you. All right. Everyone have a wonderful afternoon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.